Hi, this is Victor Avalar back with another episode of 10 Minute Insights. And today we're going to talk about open compute and who it's for. And for the first time, we have a guest with us. This is Rob Bunger from Schneider. And he's going to help us uh, discuss OCP and uh, tell you a little bit about what it is. Thanks for being here, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Let's start with just a quick introduction. Sure. Um, I work within the CTO office here at Schneider. And within an organization that covers things uh, like industry organizations, uh, standards, uh, consortiums. And so my work within Open Compute as a volunteer is within the data center project. For two years, I was the data center project lead and currently the incubation committee rep. Okay. So just at a high level, tell us, for those of you who don't know what Open Compute is, just kind of give us a brief description of that. Sure. So Open Compute is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2011 and uh, Facebook spearheading this together with uh, companies like uh, Intel, uh, Rackspace, and um, Goldman Sachs. And uh, they were looking to make, uh, they were having problems doing compute at scale. And they were looking to open up the, uh, the IT hardware, kind of similar to the software open source movement mm. uh, to, um, uh, you know, uh, make it uh, better for their needs. So one of the things that I had heard is the big reason why they started OCP, why Facebook started it was to stop buying servers from, you know, the large server vendors because they were spending too much money on them. Is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah. So... I, I guess maybe partially, right? Yeah. The um, uh, when they looked at their workloads and the type of servers that they needed, uh, you know, the off-the-shelf components might have had stuff that they did not need, mm -hmm. um, and so they like, were like what, like bezels and yeah, maybe bezels and ports mm -hmm. and you know the specifications inside. And mm -hmm. so uh, as they dug into it, they were able to specify a server that met their needs, uh, reduce the cost, and also it wasn't just about cost it was about efficiency power efficiency making a server that uh, ran very efficiently as well as uh, easy to maintain so operational efficiency all right so let's get right into what one of these racks looks like i know i've seen it but for those of you who haven't seen it let's let's have a look okay so up on the screen uh, we have some images of open compute it hardware you know in first gla glance you're uh, probably say uh, you know it doesn't look terribly different Right. And, and it's it's not, but uh, there are some key aspects. Uh, the rack in this case, this is a uh, is, is is still two feet wide or 600 millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll notice um, uh, the, the rails are actually a little bit further apart. Instead of 19 inches, mm -hmm. they're, they're 20, uh, 21 inches. Yeah. It's hard to okay. tell from here. I mean, if you step back, it almost looks like a regular rack. Right, right. The other thing uh, you'll see in the one on the left, there's two power shelves and the one in the middle, there's one power shelf. And so the, the power supplies have actually been pulled out of the servers and now they're centralized within the rack, um, which allows you to more right size. And so the power is distributed within the rack uh, in the back via a DC uh, bus bar, either 12 or, or 48 volts. Yeah, I remember we did some kind of analysis to show how much oversizing you get rid of when you consolidate the power supplies. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a, it was a bigger savings, I think, than we expected mm -hmm. when we were doing the analysis. Mm -hmm. um, now, I have another slide that kind of shows a little bit more of what happens to the infrastructure just upstream of this rack. If you were to look at a traditional data center with a traditional rack, this is what it might look like, right? You're, you're going to have a, a UPS system. Uh, you'd have a power distribution or PDU or RPP uh, feeding a rack PDU or outlet strip, which would be in the rack, and then you'd have cords that go to uh, each server, which usually has two power supplies within each server. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just interject. So I try and define all these acronyms. We have PDU, which is power distribution unit, and RPP, <laughs> which is a remote power panel, for those of you who aren't familiar with that. Right. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Now, um, we have a little, uh, you know, show transition. So what, what's different? So the rack is different. As we said, it's 19 instead of 19 inch uh, between the rails, it's 21 inch. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the, the PDU goes away and power distributed to each server via these bus bars in the back, which would be 12 or 48 volt DC. Now to get the 12 or 48 volt DC, these power supplies, again, they're not in the servers, they're centralized. Mm -hmm. And uh, you basically have AC coming into these things and it's a, just a rectifier that gives you 12 or 48 volt. And then instead of traditional servers, you'd have these servers that uh, would connect to the bus bars and uh, get powered. So whereas each server had two power supplies for redundancy, they now have 
no power supplies and it's all centralized at the rack. Right, and you can configure these for in plus one is pretty typical with open compute. You can still have two in power to that overall PSU. Um, there's been other configurations where you still even do two in. Uh, another interesting thing that uh, when the, the, the spec was published is um, because of the advent of basically of lithium ion batteries, right? Mm -hmm. These are smaller and lighter mm -hmm. uh, and you're able to get a more power in a smaller place. If you couple those power supplies uh, with batteries, you can now put the, the UPS function right there in the rack. So these are specified with maybe 90 seconds or maybe three minutes of runtime uh, right there in the rack. Okay, that makes sense. So, one of the things that um, Schneider assumed right off the bat was that um, most enterprise customers that adopt OCP are going to do that within a mixed environment. It's okay that Facebook's going to use this 100% OCP, right? That makes sense. But what if an enterprise customer uses this? They're certainly going to have traditional gear. So what would they do to support both traditional and, um, and OCP type servers? Right, yeah, when you, when you look at this, you gotta wonder, is this for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Can everybody deploy this? Because this looks pretty specialized. Your infrastructure upstream looks nice and streamlined, but you know, not all the data centers look like that. Right. So what's expected is uh, if you have a data center or you know you're gonna have mixed loads, a traditional, you know, that, that uh, uh, traditional servers with the uh, upstream UPS system, uh, you can deploy open compute, uh, no problem, right next to the racks, mm -hmm. uh, just without, um, you know, without the batteries inside the uh, the rack, which is uh, uh, which is what some of the enterprises do already. So, uh, right. So the, the UPS that you're saying that because the UPS, the centralized UPS, is there to support both. OCP and, yeah. and traditional servers. Right. So uh, one open compute uh, member like Fidelity uh, who deploys open compute gear, this is this is the way they, they do that. Okay. So I know that we did work on electrical architecture that helped support that. So maybe you could <laughs> explain why we did that. Yeah. So looking at this diagram, you can tell that, you know, you could put an open compute uh, rack almost in any data center electrically. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before, which is kind of important, that these racks are typically integrated uh, before they arrive on site. You know, traditionally, you install your empty rack, you populate your rack with servers and rack gear and stack, yeah. uh, on site, right. right? Once it's in place, mm -hmm. these are different, right? Usually, integrators uh, will populate it, test the whole rack ahead of time, mm -hmm. so it's fully integrated, and then it gets packaged up and sent to the site. So they're very heavy, uh, you know, and so. When I say you know any data center, that's not really true when you consider that. But from a power perspective, it'll plug into a three-phase circuit like many regular racks. Okay. Um, but we we took a look at that and said, well, if we, in the spirit of open compute, say, how can you optimize the electrical infrastructure? You know, maybe take the waste out, have just enough. What could that look like? And so this is a reference design, as you know, that w that we came up with. Um, and yeah, I remember our CTO presented this and even called it like what happens if we hacked the electrical <laughs> architecture with, in, in the spirit of, you know, hackathons that Facebook does, right? Right, right. So right-sizing all the components, only putting what's necessary in, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe getting rid of a lot of the extras sometimes that you see that might not be necessary, like load bait connections and all that. But okay. so what this is, is you'll notice here that uh, it's a two-in design, which is the most typical architecture out there for any enterprise data center and even co-location. But uh, the UPS system is only on one side. So you still have two paths. You're able to do some uh, concurrent maintainability, uh, and, uh, but your battery backup would be on, on one side, which does optimize the cost a bit, mm -hmm. increases a lot of the, uh, the efficiency because these are riding at a good. And, and down at the bottom, we're just uh, demonstrating how you can have traditional servers fed off of uh, Regular uh, circuits and off the same the same cert, you know same RPP mm -hmm. uh, you can have open compute racks. Okay, so Rob, if I'm an enterprise customer, how do I know if OCP is right for me? Can you just give me some questions that I, I can or you know just things that I can go through to, to, to make that decision? Right. So uh, majority of the decision is going to be on the I, IT side, right? If if you want to deploy IT hardware mm -hmm. and uh, not an expert in that area, but um, one thing to consider is how much do you need to deploy? Now, I'd say historically, uh, even if you wanted to and you were, wanted to try OCP, it was historically difficult. 
the, the uh, supply chain for open compute gear uh, uh, tailored to very, very large purchases. Um, and it wasn't set up if you wanted to even just deploy a couple of racks, see how it works, give it a go, and then deploy more. Mm -hmm. uh, that is currently uh, being worked on, and Open Compute has opened up a marketplace. Uh, they're trying to work on uh, suppliers to be able to supply maybe smaller uh, increments and mm -hmm. uh, get it out to the general population. But if you're a large enterprise, uh, you know there's definitely people doing it right now and uh, giving it a try. Okay, great. All right, so that's all the time we have today. Thanks again for tuning in.